Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 13, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part, we're going to see how downsampling works. Downsampling is necessary when you want to present an image to a neural network. The letters that you draw are actually relatively high resolution. We wouldn't want to have that many input neurons for the neural network. Plus, you might draw different letters at different sizes. The downsampling routine will handle both of these two issues. It will get them down to a consistent size and also to a consistent pixel resolution that is manageable for the neural network. We will look at bo how both of these are accomplished in the code now. Through the downsampling process, we can negate both position and size. This allows the neural network to be able to recognize the characters no matter where they're drawn and at what size. We're going to now take a look at this and see exactly how this is accomplished. This is done in a two-step process. The first part, where we actually negate the position, we need to find a bounding rectangle around the actual letter that was drawn by the user. This will allow us to then proceed into the second step, where we're going to actually perform the downsampling. The downsampling will be only performed within the area that the bounding rectangle was drawn around. This causes the downsampled image to be a consistent resolution and also to not take into account the size of the letter. Let's look at an example of how we would downsample the letter J, the capital letter J in the Latin alphabet. Here you see two letter J's drawn. They are drawn at different positions and they are drawn at different sizes. We don't want the fact that you draw a J further up in the region or further down to the right in the region or at different sizes to make any difference to the neural network. These are both capital letter J's and need to be treated as such. The first step is to establish a bounding rectangle around each of these two capital letter J's. This is done by encroaching on the four sides around each of the letters. There's a side, the upper, the bottom, the left and right, or the north, south, east, and west, if you want to think of it like a map. We take a line, essentially, the program takes a line, and that line is scanned for pixels. As soon as the line picks up a pixel, it's going to stop. That causes it to snap around the letter and create a perfect bounding rectangle around it. Here you see the lines have snapped around the two letter J's. We now have bounding boxes and these bound, bounding boxes allow us to take the pixels for the downsampled image from a consistent area. So when we take the pixels from the capital J or the lowercase j, it's not going to have any effect what the size is. We've neutralized the size by drawing a bounding rectangle. You'll see more how this is done when we get into downsampling. Downsampling, what we're going to do is we're going to take those two bounding rectangles that we created and we're going to overlay a grid. We're going to overlay an 8x8 grid. It doesn't matter if we're overlaying over top of the small capital J or the big capital J. We are simply going to overlay an 8x8 grid over top of both of the J's and then we are going to turn each of the grid elements black if there's a single pixel of the drawing inside of there. This will effectively downsample the image. We're going to now take a look and see exactly how this is done. We're going to start with the two bounding rectangles and the letter J's that we had previously and we're going to overlay an 8x8 grid on top of each of them. Once we do this it's going to look something like this. Here you see the two J's. There are 64 pixels or 64 boxes drawn over both of them. This is how downsampling is going to negate the size. Both J's are going to be treated as a 64 pixel or an 8x8 pixel image. We look at each one of these boxes one by one and if any drawing occurred inside of that box, we're going to make it solid. Let's see how this looks. Now you see the two downsampled J's. Now they're, the different, they're different sizes, but that's just a matter of how the drawing was done so that you can see that they're still the same two letter J's. 
However, the important part is they are now 64 pixel images because they are both 8 by 8. These images or the pixels from these 8 by 8s are going to feed into the 64 input neurons for the OCR application. This concludes part two. In the next part, you will see how to implement the actual recognition part of the OCR application and how to tell the user what letters we believe that they have entered. We hope that you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.